speaker. I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to be able to make a presentation today on the government's estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2024-2025. First of all, let me thank the Lord for his continued blessings, both to me and to my family, for us being here, and to continue to thank him for his blessings for the most part on solution, Mr. Speaker. It is in his word that we always speak. Mr. Speaker, before I begin my presentation, I really have to commend the member from Labrie. In fact, I would love to take the tape from the member of Labrie and show it to everyone. Because he did actually a better job than I think that I have done in explaining what our policies were. You know, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> you would, you would, you would think that the members don't know that people's memories go back further than just today. That if you were to go back to when they, they've been in government, because he's been a member of parliament for many years, Mr. Speaker. I'm not even going to go back as far as 1997. I'm simply going to go back to 2006 to 2011. And I would like to think, Mr. Speaker, given the track record that he had in 2006 to 2011 in his own constituency, which appeared to be visionless, that the impact, Mr. Speaker, of what the United Workers Party did between 2016 and 2021 had a significant impact on his vision and his own aspirations for Labry. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I asked, I said, um, before I begin my estimates, no problem, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, all of a sudden, you would think, you would think that the statement of, you cannot eat roads, you cannot eat roads, that was the cry. All of a sudden, I hear members on the opposite side standing talking about, they cannot wait to see the roads. They cannot wait. The village tourism that we were talking about, of which Labry has a rich history and a tremendous amount of potential for developing Labry. But the member would ought to know is that in order for Labry to be able to maximize its potential, you must develop the south. And that is a vision that the Labour Party seems to be lacking in, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we get to the estimates, I first want, Mr. Speaker, to describe this budget as a state of hopelessness. And hopelessness on two definitions of the word. The first is that it is empty and directionless. Empty and directionless. And Mr. Speaker, it has provided no hope to the people of this country. And I will, in my presentation and going through the estimates, show exactly that this is a government that is just a patch-patch government. That all they want to do is to maintain the status quo. They don't know how to grow the economy, Mr. Speaker. They don't know how to make an investment. They don't have a vision for this country, Mr. Speaker. So when we go through the budget, and remember, Mr. Speaker, I'm not the one who came up with the word. They came up with their own term. The year of infrastructure, and I saw the members on the opposite side probably anticipating my presentation and already, already alluding to the fact that infrastructure is not what we are accustomed to doing infrastructure. So if you ask the, the vast majority of people in St. Lucia, what is infrastructure? They tell you roads, bridges, physical things, infrastructure. But they've already now tried to say the infrastructure is much broader than that. So let's go through it, Mr. Speaker. Again, we've seen that the electoral department, an increase of $2 million. 
the Ministry of, of Home Affairs, a drop of two million. And that's important, you know, Mr. Speaker. Last year was the year of health and security. And when you take the combination of the security, they've dropped it by two million dollars. So if you've already admitted that you've increased, you've increased the revenue through the levy, which we all now know, Mr. Speaker, that was a facade. We now know that the levy came into being because it was a condition to the Lord. And they sat down and said, how is the best way that we can recover revenue? What's the best thing? Because the most natural thing to do was to have increased the VAT back to 15%. But they knew that that would not be palatable. So they came up with a levy. And in order to get the levy to be acceptable to the people, went to the people and said to them, this is for health and security. Now I pointed out in last year's budget, Mr. Speaker, there was no increase in the allocation for health and security. Again this year, we're seeing that there is no substantial increase. In fact, there was a decline of $2 million when it comes to security in this country, Mr. Speaker. And that there was a slight increase in health of $5 million. A far cry from the 17 million. And if you really believe, Mr. Speaker, that people are going to be fooled into thinking that the normal expenditures that you have for health and security, that all of a sudden the 17 million dollars was designed to help offset some of that cost, everybody believed that the levy was to improve what we already had. Not to maintain it, improve it. But no, Mr. Speaker. They believe in their arrogance, Mr. Speaker, that they could, have, they could have gotten away with this. But luckily, the bank loans required them to say what the conditions of those loans were, Mr. Speaker. Agriculture. We've seen a, de a decline in agriculture, not only in numbers, but we're seeing it in terms of importance. A drop of $2 million. Commerce, down to 10 million, bound by $2 million. And I'm gonna have a special session to deal with infrastructure, the year of infrastructure. And guess what? The Ministry of Infrastructure's budget was cut by $50 million in the year of infrastructure. In fact, there's a blight, there's a blight on having your ministry in the title of any Labour Party budget. There's a blight. Finance up $20 million, and that $20 million almost is 100% on interest. External affairs, up $3 million. Tourism, the savior, up $10 million. Equity, the important equity ministry. Equity, down $18 million, Mr. Speaker. Education, and I'm so happy to see that, up 30. And of that 30, $14 million for school repairs. Remember, the United Workers Party used to spend $10 million a year in order to fix up schools, and that is still not enough. So I applaud the $14 million, and we must find more money because every minister, that most of the, mem the, mem the members that, that spoke today, Mr. Speaker, spoke about what? Termites in their schools. There is a greater need even to do more than we were doing before, not less, so I applaud it. Health was up $5 million. Youth and sports was up $3 million. Economic development up $35 million. So Mr. Speaker, the entire budget, the year of infrastructure, we're talking about, we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to show people around, Mr. Speaker, we're going to give people hope, Mr. Speaker, the entire budget is up $40 million. After, after, after boasting about these incredible surpluses, Mr. Speaker, that is the best that this government can come up with, is that they're going to inject another $40 million of expenditure into this country. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me go through the details of that. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to make the point. I'll, I'll keep that point to the end. Mr. Speaker, on page 23, Governor General, I see that we've, we said that we're going to 
increase the budget slightly to improve the performance by sourcing skill development training programs, particularly in the areas of event planning, plant pr propagation, and landscaping to ensure successful hosting of events and the continued improvement in the aesthetics of the compound. And to do it, Mr. Speaker, the appointment of an assistant permanent secretary. I guess that's appropriate. We have an acting governor general. We might as well have an assistant permanent secretary. Has allowed for the effective management of administration to promote the efficiency and accountability in the operations of the office of the governor general, Mr. Speaker. Parliament, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was remiss of me because I've not sent you a report, as I promised. And I got to participate, Mr. Speaker, in a training program on the Public Accounts Committee, Mr. Speaker. And I've promised you that I will be calling a Public Accounts Committee meeting. That was a very useful training program. And really what came out of the program, Mr. Speaker, I think that many of us, myself included, have misunderstood what the Public Accounts Committee is supposed to be doing. The Public Accounts Committee is supposed to be meeting after an Auditor General's report. And the intention of that is not to go after ministers of government, Mr. Speaker, but is to look at whether the merits of the, of the audit, the outcome of the audit, Mr. Speaker, as well as, Mr. Speaker, holding the public servants accountable for what's supposed to have happened in the follow-up, Mr. Speaker. So I do intend, you and I had a slight discussion, um, in taking one of the audit reports that have already been presented and to use that now to hopefully we can start the process of having regular public accounts. I see that there are many members here who have been leaders of the opposition and never held meetings. But again, Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping that I can break that trend and cause for there to be a meeting, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I applaud the efforts of the Parliament, Mr. Speaker, and I see a subvention here for uh, a virtual Parliament in order to allow persons to access the Parliament on their um, hand devices and home devices. I applaud that. I think that the more that we can make Parliament available in an easy way to the public, I will certainly encourage that. I think that's a very healthy democracy when we're able to do that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. We see that the travel allocation, Mr. Speaker, on page 55. Over the years, Mr. Speaker, in 2022-2023 was 1.17 million. Last year it went to 1.79 million. This year it's gone to 1.857 million, Mr. Speaker. And this is one of some of the things we talked about. Whether the members on the opposite side want to appreciate the austerity that's taking place in this country and asking people to make sacrifices. There are some very important sacrifices, I believe, that we as leaders should be making. And I'm not seeing that reflective in the budget, Mr. Speaker. In fact, that that's a classic example of where that happened. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, members on the opposite side keep on saying things, but they don't produce any evidence of anything, Mr. Speaker. But go ahead, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we keep hearing that. We're going to make it a document of the House. We're going to make it a copy of the dance, right? Mr. Speaker, there was an increase. There was increase. Order, uh, order. On the grant contributions and subventions, Mr. Speaker, it's also important to note that in 2022-23, it was 1.574 million. Last year, it went to 7.17 million. And this year, it's 7.1 million again, Mr. Speaker. That in fact, in the Prime Minister's office, there's $7 million of, of what I call discretionary expenditure on grants and contributions that the Prime Minister can make from his office, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, one of the things I noticed um, that I would like to, um, maybe the authors of the um, estimates, is that there used to be an, a line item called um, non-establishment for staff. And I see in this year's budget, in this year's estimates, that that has been taken off. So it would be interesting to know whether those people have been 
gone, where are, they, where are they at? Because in terms of numbers of people, they had a line item in the estimates that showed the number of people that were in the ministries that were non-establishment, and that number seems to have disappeared. So it'll be interesting to know where that, where that number has gone to, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, public service on page 78, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there are people obviously who must be concerned about where we're going. Mr. Speaker, rental hire has gone from, in public service, from 15 million to 28 million. Mr. Speaker, this has been a, a growing number over many years, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, if I can, if I can bring that point up. In the members' budget estimates, budget speech, um, It was interesting to note, Mr. Speaker, that the member, Prime Minister, was explaining about um, the increase in operating costs and specifically spoke about the increase in rent, but at the same time spoke about the increase in demand for, for rental space. Which one is it? So it was an increase in the cost of the Dyer Mall, Mr. Speaker, and yet, in the following line, said that there was a demand for space. So here it is, you're complaining about the Dagger Mall, which is 77,000 square feet of space. And even with that, you're still saying that there's a demand for more rental space? Which one is it? Is it that it was good planning? And that the government had anticipated that it would be an increase in demand for rental space? at a cheaper price, $4 a square foot? Or is it in fact that this government does not appreciate the fact that that has happened? Right? You know, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let me continue, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Dyer Mall is being rented for four dollars a square foot. Mr. Speaker, there are many, there are many, there are many, many um, uh, office space rentals that are in excess of six dollars. So, on one hand, what we're hearing the government say, Mr. Speaker, is that they're complaining about the mall, but at the same time are admitting that there is a demand for more office space within the government. Mr. S Mr. Speaker. Ministry of National Security on page 190. It was interesting to note, Mr. Sp Mr. Speaker, that other than the fact that the budget has been cut, and now we have three we have three ministers of national security. I guess that signifies the overwhelming importance of security that we would have to have three ministers. Member for Kashmir East. I don't want to interrupt the leader of the opposition. He's doing a good job himself. This is because there's, there are no three ministers of national security. There was in the budget, there is an allocation for a separate minister of national security. As we speak now, the, the, the ministerial portfolio is as follows. Finance, economic development, youth economy, and Ministry for Justice and National Security. One. What you have now is it's going to be a separate ministry, a separate ministerial administration for national security. It's, it has never said that there will be a new minister of national security. So the, the leader of the opposition, as usual, 
could, you, could you please? I want us to enjoy because that doesn't make any sense. But you know, this is going in the public. There's only one reason I said that one. But like, but you know, we deliberately does it in, but I won't ask him to enjoy it. There's only one reason I said and the records will show you that from, from the inception in 2021, there was only one reason I said Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's interesting to note that last year there was a separate line item for home affairs and for national security. This year, the two have been merged. And, you know, again, this government tends to do things to leave things to speculation. The member from Miku North, who I'm very happy that he has a portfolio, the title of his portfolio, I didn't give him the title of the portfolio, is crime prevention. So you have a minister of home affairs, a minister of national security, and a minister of crime prevention. And meanwhile, you have a reduction in the budget. And remember, this is coming on the heels of the fact that last year, that we had, was it? The year of health and security. Now, I'm not going to go down the road of speaking about the numbers of security as to whether we saw an improvement in security. Everybody knows for themselves what's happened with security. Everybody knows. The fact is that right now we have three ministers. So I, I, I move on, Mr. Speaker. On page 190, it says to improve public perception through community involvement in crime fighting, thereby enhancing citizen security and safety. The achievements. Patrols impact 30,792 48 hours of patrols were conducted in the first half of the financial year. When compared to the same period, there was a decrease of 17% in the year of security. A decrease in patrols. Weapons recovered impact for the period under review. The, the, the police force recorded a decrease of 29% in the number of offensive weapons recovered and a slight increase of 5% in the number of firearms seized. That is in the year of health and security. So we've seen no additional allocation last year and a reduction this year. We've now seen even a more complex situation of having now three ministers with titles associated to security. And we see in their own report the impact of not giving the additional allocation. And we want to know why crime is where it is, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move on now to infrastructure. Page 253, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, when we hear particular slants in this house, they always an old saying, they say there's never, there's never smoke without fire. And when I had to listen to my colleague from Castries North, Mr. Speaker, it's almost as if he forgot that he was a former prime minister on the United Workers' Party and the number of years he spent in the United Workers' Party. And, 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 and more importantly, Mr. Speaker, that the member sat for five years breaking bread with colleagues in a cabinet. And then all of a sudden <coughs> decided, and it's my word, Mr. Speaker, betray. Some people are even more uh, harsh in their statements. And now he has found himself in a particular situation. Mr. He's found himself in a situation where clearly the members on the opposite side, who he now says he's very happy to be with, must find, can they trust him? Can they trust him? Now, the evidence is, Mr. Speaker, here it is that his ministry was reduced by $50 million in the, in the year of infrastructure, right? Are you, are, I mean, really? 
So that is that is that 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 is bestowing confidence on the minister that they would reduce his budget by fifty million dollars in the year to add insult upon injury in the year of infrastructure. And where did the money go, Mr. Speaker? The money went to the Prime Minister's office. Because the Prime Minister's office in the economic development was increased by 40 million. So they took the money from the Ministry of Infrastructure and put it into the Prime Minister's office. And I want to know, not me, I'm sure the people must be going, why? Huh? <laughs> it must show the level of confidence, Mr. Speaker, that they have in the member from, from, from Castries North. And no wonder he feels that in order maybe to gain back some level of credibility, he has to now become like his friend from Cass Free Central, who I still say is my friend. I'm your right? friend. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, right, they're there for a reason. Two independent people lost in the wilderness, Mr. Speaker. And the Ministry of Infrastructure, are you kidding me? That his capital expenditure went from 97 million to 61 million. But yet, Mr. Speaker, the operating cost remains at the same 25 million. So here it is that he is going to produce less or have less money to spend, but yet he has to maintain the same staff. So that tells me a story. That tells me, Mr. Stewart, the Mr. Speaker, that y'all have now discovered that what we know, the reason why he got the name Heavy Roller. Heavy Roller is a piece of equipment, is a big piece of equipment that moves slowly. And the reason why they call him the Heavy Roller, okay? Because he was dead weight. He's dead weight. That's what he is, Mr. Speaker. Even worse yet, if the member Mr. says Speaker, he himself the Heavy Roller. Mr. Speaker, okay? the Honorable Member. Member, member of Castries North. Please wait to be recognized. Yeah, on a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker, the honorable member is misleading the house. It's not people who call me Miss um, Heavy Roller. I call myself Heavy Roller. Not people. I called myself Heavy Roller in 1992. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, if in fact the member had called himself the heavy roller since 1992, I'm upset that we were not forewarned because if we would have studied what a heavy roller, what a heavy roller was, and the equipment, that, have everybody seen a heavy roller? The big one with the big wheel on it, that's a heavy roller. But it, I'm gonna say to you that what we've learned over time, Mr. Speaker, that is just dead weight. Okay, that's all we have, Mr. Speaker. Here it is, a member who is touting how great he is, a senior minister within the government, and his budget was cut by $50 million, Mr. Speaker. But I'm not done. I'm not done. Page 257, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, page 257. Implementation of interventions designed to maintain, improve, or create accessibility to communities and service, services, particularly after adverse weather events by March 2024. Review, uh, the, the comment was, number of interventions have been made. That's what we've come accustomed to. If you go back in time and you listen to the member from Castries North give speeches, he's always on a new strategy. It's always a new plan. Can't give you any details. And that's exactly a number of interventions have been made on something as important as that. It goes on, Mr. Speaker. Review and update disaster risk response plans by March 2024. Enhance the institutional capacity of our technical team by March of 2025. Continuous monitoring and update assessments of vulnerable areas. And here's what they say. The disaster risk and response plans. Now remember, Mr. Speaker, disaster risk is the the CDB loan, the World Bank loan, the pillars is on climate change risk enhancement. That has been the talk all over. Everybody recognizes how important it is. Now, not cleaning the drains and not doing proper desilting before the hurricane season, right, is a disaster. But here's what it says. The disaster and risk re uh, response plans are currently being reviewed. You have a former minister a prime minister today who said he's the most prepared as a minister of infrastructure. You have a member who spent five years at the Ministry of Infrastructure as a former prime minister, and plans are under review. Ongoing internally, however, funding constraints has affected additional training. Ongoing continuous zonal team site record. 
So here it is, with the $50 million, they had financial constraints. Now that you're going to take away $50 million, what's going to happen, Mr. Speaker? I continue, Mr. Speaker. I continue. Page 261, Mr. Speaker. Updating procedures to international standards. Ongoing, but funding has affected completion. Always ongoing. Okay? It's like the member, the member from uh, uh, Caspi's North yesterday, Mr. Speaker. I had to break out laughing, Mr. Speaker. To tell us that the delays in the Millennium Highway, which are passed over a year, everybody can see for themselves. Everybody's complaining about it. That you want to come to this house and say that you got technical advice, that it was rain, and that the contractor's equipment was being stolen. That is your, that is your answer for that? Updating procedures to international standards, ongoing. Mr. Speaker, page 263. We continue to aim to significantly reduce or arrest the level of deterioration of our public buildings and reduce the amount of emergencies by 70%. Here's the achievements. There was not much progress made in this respect. No funding was provided in the last budget to set up the computer maintenance management software, which would allow us to prepare those maintenance uh, outlets. Further reduction of public complaints ongoing. Greater efficiency in the planning and the electrical operations of the various government buildings ongoing, hampered by limitations of resources. A recurring theme, Mr. Speaker, no detail, ongoing, and a lack of resources. And all I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, his budget's been reduced by $50 million. $50 million. We continue to aim to significantly reduce, sorry, that's page 263, Mr. Speaker. Reduce the arrest of level of deterioration of our public. Sorry, I read that already, Mr. Speaker. The next one is 271. I'm sorry that the member, the member from Labry is not here because this was his old domain, which is the Met Office. Unable to implement QMS due to staffing constraints. Presently awaiting slash but to sign document by March 24. Unable to implement programs due to staffing constraints. Can only accommodate school visits to the Met Office. The Met Office, you know, Mr. Speaker. That falls under you. That falls under you, Mr. That falls under you. That falls under you. Mr. Speaker, we just have to look at what's going on under the minister's portfolio. Hunora International Airport, nothing. All they're giving us is excuses. The money was approved already. OECC was hired, Mr. Speaker, to provide oversight on the overall project. In fact, the, minute, the, the, the SLASPA had three forms of oversight, Mr. Speaker. OECC, a special project unit in SLASPA, headed that's not true. Go and ask um, your good friend, the same one that's helping you with um, uh, GPH. Okay, who was who was the head of the special unit in Slasper? Who was? You don't know? Okay. So there was a special unit, Mr. Speaker, in Slasper with its own staffing to provide the oversight. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker. Harry was also hired to provide oversight. So you had three entities providing oversight, Mr. Speaker. All of the projects that were being done under the HI airport were being put out to tender. It was ten everything. Every single thing was put out to tender. Absolutely. So you're telling me that the piling was not tendered? The, the piling was not tendered? The piling was not tendered? The piling was tendered. The mainframe building was tendered. Every aspect was being tendered. We appointed OECC to provide the oversight and expert. Remember, Mr. Speaker, that's the same OECC that did 
that did the airport in St. In St. Vincent. I've done airports in Taiwan. I've done all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Mr. Speaker. All of them. That's what OECC did. That's who OECC. It's unbelievable to me that the members again would attempt to demonize an entity just in order to justify what they want to do. The same way they demonized Cabot, they demonized DSH, they demonized Sandals, they demonized everybody. But the moment they're in government and they believe that they're getting anybody to comply with them, all of a sudden they become their best friends. So here it is, don't they know that Taiwan is our friend? And that who is the owner, one of the owners, majority owners of OECC? A Taiwanese government who gave us the Lord. So I left you with the foundation already done and all of the financing already in place. And this government came in with this minister and stopped it. The Millennium Highway has been a catastrophic disaster, Mr. Speaker. Road conditions have never been worse in this country. And don't take it from me, Mr. Speaker. Take it from the people out there. Every day, people are calling the shows to complain about the state of the roads. And again, remember, Mr. Speaker, what makes it worse is memory Members in this house today and yesterday want to brag about roads, roads that they said you cannot eat. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? Even sugar cakes gets the word. Even sugar cakes. Even sugar cakes. I see the member, the minister, has gone to get a canine dog from France, right? And I heard, I saw he was in Canada talking to sugar cakes. I don't know if he was trying to convince sugar cakes to come down to St. Lucia to help that K-9 or to keep that K-9 friendly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, driver's license. I hear there's a fiasco going on in driver's license. I hear reports that they are pierced persons. Who? Some, I, I, I believe I know who the person is, but maybe I'm waiting for the government to enlighten us who the person was that is delivering and, re and providing fake driver's license, Mr. Speaker. GPH. The last one. How you can have a deal, Mr. Speaker, that you're going to give away $400 million of revenue and the only thing that we can see is friends are getting jobs. That's all. Where is it? Where are we getting? So you're going to give GPH all the revenue. And I see that we, before we came, we passed a, uh, a gazetted thing to allow GPH now to collect the revenue from the, 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 the garbage the environmental tax. So I want to put all the taxi drivers, all the vendors on notice that your turn will come soon, that the revenue will no longer be going to anybody else but be going to GPH. And we have to know what GPH is going to charge. GPH is doing this, Mr. Speaker, to improve their balance sheet. I'm so sorry that members on the opposite side have not realized what a bad deal they have done, what a disservice they have done to the people of, this, of St. Lucia. And more importantly, Mr. Speaker, at the expense of the people in the South, where a cruise ship facility should be going. That's where cruise ships should be expanding. But to want to expand the cruise ship capacity into Castries, Mr. Speaker, is a shame. Banan's land, Mr. Speaker. The member on the opposite side said, so we'll be very careful because it's in court. We have a defamation matter, Mr. Speaker. Okay? But my, 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 my statements have been made publicly. I reiterate and reaffirm something is wrong, Mr. Speaker, with the Binance Land. Mr. Speaker, I now move on to finance, Mr. Speaker. Page 285. Mr. Speaker, we see that, Mr. Speaker, that the operating expenses in the Ministry of Finance has gone from $83 million to $96 million, Mr. Speaker. We see that, Mr. Speaker, capital expenditure from 3 to $10 million, Mr. Speaker. Why are we increasing the operating costs in the Ministry of Finance at this point? There's no clarity here as to why that is the case, Mr. Speaker. All I've seen is that the interest payments, though, Mr. Speaker, have gone up by $20 million. And again, remember, Mr. Speaker, many of the loans that we got during the COVID period, and we got those loans in the COVID period, Mr. Speaker. So if you look at the numbers, Mr. Speaker,
Mr. Speaker, if we look at the borrowings during our tenure, you would have noticed, Mr. Speaker, oh, right here, that in 2017, we borrowed $104 million. In 2018, we added to the, the overall debt by $141 million. By 2019, Mr. Speaker, we increased it by 124. And in 2020, COVID, Mr. Speaker, and you know, and, and members on the other side seem to want to trivialize the impact of COVID. They forget the economy that we inherited that had zero reserves. In fact, the sink fund that we had, the government spent it because it could not get bonds, Mr. Speaker. That's how deplorable the financial state was. We want to forget that. And then in 2020, we borrowed almost $400 million. Where did that come from, Mr. Speaker? If your economy contracts by 24%, why? The world shut down. Tourism closed. We've repeated, repeatedly said the reason why St. Lucia's uh, budget, so GDP contracted by more, is because our GDP had been reviewed. And the reason for the increase in the GDP is because it was underestimating tourism. That had not happened in the other countries, so you're not comparing apples to apples. So because of the increase in the importance of tourism in our GDP, Mr. Speaker, when tourism shuts down, it's going to have an impact. And the significant impact, Mr. Speaker, is the cost didn't go away. We still had to pay salaries. We still had to pay the debt. We still had to keep the doors open. In fact, the operating costs in government went up, Mr. Speaker, during COVID. Policemen were doing overtime. Marine police were doing overtime. Nurses were doing overtime. We had to pay for all of the people when they came in on quarantine. Where, where do you think the money came from? That came from the operating cost. And I'm proud of the fact, Mr. Speaker, that we were able to meet all of our obligations, but more importantly, we left a recovery plan that was put together with the private sector, and sadly, the Labor Party, who were invited to be part of that recovery plan, went away. And what did they say instead, Mr. Speaker? The words are there, you know, Mr. Speaker. Only a madman would believe that tourism could come back. Only a madman would believe. The member, the member, the member from Castries, he said that. Okay? The, the member from Castries, he said it was only a madman who would believe that tourism would have recovered. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. Anything I say, you'll say, I'll be at it. That's a challenge. Anything, Mr. Speaker, I say that the member from Mr. South says, I'll be at it. I challenge him. Anything he says, I say, be at it. Except if, except if he does it normal AI thing. If he does his AI thing, I can't, I can't. Because you know, they're doing AI now. So if, if he does his normal AI thing, I will be able to support him. But anything he says, I'll be at it. And anything he says to the fact, I'm going to show documents to show everything he says, I will be. But I hope he stays to listen to Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's amazing to me that a prime minister who has presided over his own track record about truth would want to stand on a point of order when everybody knows that that's what he said. That he said, the tape has been played several times, I'm happy to play it for you, okay? That you did not know what the impact of tourism was on the economy. Okay, Mr. Speaker. So all I'm saying to you, Mr. Speaker, we left a recovery plan that is the best recovery plan in the entire Caribbean. The economy grew by 12.5% in 2021, 20, 2022, despite the fact that the world had not reopened completely. In fact, we still had protocols. That the economy grew by 18% the following year. On what, Mr. Speaker? On tourism. On the recovery of the same tourism. And today... Member for Microsoft, you have 15 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Suzel. Mr. Speaker, I would like to invoke Senate Order 30 to 10 to give the, the member for Miku South, uh, leader of the opposition, an additional half an hour. Members, the question is that standing order 
3210 be suspended to allow the Leader of the Opposition an additional 30 minutes. I now put a question, as many as of their opinion say aye. Aye. As many as of a country opinion say no. No. I think the no's have it. The no's have it. You know, Mr. Speaker, it speaks to the, how genuine the statements that were made, where it speaks about when we were in government and we did this and we were the wicked government, right? You mean to tell me that members of the House are so scared? But it's okay, Mr. Speaker. There's, there's the People's Parliament, Mr. Speaker, and whatever I'm not able to finish, I'll be able to finish at that point. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I know this at property tax, again, what's interesting, on page 315, Mr. Speaker, the department continues to work with the research and policy unit regarding the property tax regime. The most prepared Prime Minister. And three years into it, his ministry cannot come up with a plan. Really? That's not my words, you know, Mr. Speaker. That's the words there. That's the words there. Okay? I don't attack no civil servant. At the end of the day, the members in this house, particularly the members in government, are responsible for oversight and making sure the job's getting done. You can't keep passing the buck, Mr. Speaker. That's what the people put you there for. And if the seat's too hot, get out. You can't just sit and enjoy the fruits of the labor and not put the effort in, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, page 384. Three eighty three eighty nine, I think it's yeah, three eighty nine, Mr. Speaker. That we see again the operating operations of the ministry has gone from twenty one million, Mr. Speaker, to thirty million. Minister of Tourism. Nine million. And it's interesting to look all the way down at the bottom of all the things that the minister has, right? That the ministry is at fifty nine million dollars, Mr. Speaker. And that includes now a separate tax that's going into the marketing. I say this because members on the other side love to bring up the fact that when I was Minister of Tourism, and it's a true story, that I was able to convince the then Prime Minister, Sir John, that if we wanted to take tourism to the next level, that we had to increase the budget. And he did. And I'm grateful for him. But I want to know that we're way past that $50 million now, Mr. Speaker. And I'm glad I was able to break that ground for tourism. And that people stopped thinking that tourism was at the expense of all the other social services we have. In the Ministry of Health, Mr. Speaker, page 505. It was interesting to note, Mr. Speaker, disaster vulnerability, um, resilience and recovery has gone from 6 million to, to 11 million. Very happy to see that, Mr. Speaker. But at the same time, secondary and tertiary health care services. Remember, we're speaking about all the free services that are supposed to be providing under national health care. That the allocation has gone from 102 million to 97 million. And I make that emphasis, I make that emphasis again, Mr. Speaker at a time when last year was the year of health and security, that you had a levy. You have a levy that's going to be collecting over 40 or $50 million, Mr. Speaker, and nothing has happened. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, economic development as indicated, disaster risk and management recovery, again, we're talking about resilience building, has gone from 19 million to 10 million. So here it is, you borrowed money from the World Bank and CDB for resilience building, and in the main ministry economic development, that the Remember allocation- you saw, so you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Has gone down to 10 million, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on page 603, the document took the words out of my own mouth. It says, it says regional travel, question mark, question mark, question mark, $1 million. So I have to, what is that? Any allocation from tourism? 
Regional travel? What is that? A million dollars. Very importantly, Mr. Speaker, finally the truth is now starting to come out, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure I'm waiting for the Prime Minister's speech. Yes, the truth is what you believe it to be, but it doesn't change the truth. Uh, <laughs> I've learned from you. So, Mr. Speaker, on page... On page 659, Mr. Speaker. 659. St. Jude's Hospital Reconstruction Project is at $265 million. And in this year's estimates, $67 million. And of the $67 million, Mr. Speaker, $31 million is coming from Box. We still don't know who the contractor is. We know that work is going on. The Prime Minister continuously tells us that work is going on. Who's the contractor? And where, and where, and where are the workers coming from, Mr. Speaker? Right. Where, are the, where, are the, where are the workers coming from, Mr. Speaker? Who has the contract? The $30 million they're going to pay out in bonds, to whom are they going to pay that money? Maybe it's the same person that is going to be renting them the building for CIP. I don't know. It might be. I'm very happy that they're, they're going to be spending uh, $2.5 million. So we wondered, Mr. Speaker, when they got the Saudi loan for $200 million, how much of that $200 million was going to go into the stadium? And here it, is, it says, uh, says $2.5 million. Now, I heard the Prime Minister say that that's for consultancy fees. And I would sit and I would go, okay, so when Don Lockerbie, his company, because it's not Don Lockerbie, his company, a company that has done major work around the world in that area, got paid two and a half million dollars for his consultancy fees, that was the end of the world. And here it is now, we're going to, for one project, which is the stadium, you're going to pay a consultant now two and a half million dollars for that. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I'm very happy to see an allocation, Mr. Speaker, for the bunker, the relocation of the bunker at, um, at, uh, at Latok. No, Mr. Speaker, we've been working on that for a very, very long time. A very important priority, Mr. Speaker, especially to the people who are living in that area, Mr. Speaker. It should have never been there in the first place, but I'm glad to see, I'm very glad to see that there's an allocation this year. And I really, uh, although it's $100,000, I'm certainly hoping that they can complete that project. Mr. Speaker, I want to say to the Prime Minister, there were some things that he said in his budget statement that were a little bit worrisome. Mr. Speaker, and that was in particularly with, um, as it pertained to CIP. So Mr. Speaker, So, Mr. Speaker, here it is. He said, Mr. Speaker, the Citizenship by Investment program is expected to deposit an anticipated $91 million into the National Economic Fund as required by law. Overall revenue from the voluntary transfers is estimated to increase to 24.7 to 37 million. The member also said, Mr. Speaker, that the revenue that we were expecting came down. And he specifically said, he specifically said, Mr. Speaker, that it came down because the real estate portion of the CIP program is doing better and it's cannibalizing our donation program. There are numerous reports, Mr. Speaker, as to what is taking place with the real estate program. But I'm even more concerned, Mr. Speaker, I'm concerned, Mr. Speaker, because there are agents out in the marketplace selling a program called infrastructure. We've not heard anything. We've only heard suggestions. Remember you have five minutes left. That's Mr. Speaker. The wrong thing. Go ahead. You know the first paragraph you read. Go ahead. It's not what I said. What did you say? I said, I said, read it. And you see that's not what you said. Are you even read, 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 what, read what, member of Cash is East, what are your objectives? Mr. Chairman, because the Mr. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the member read the first two lines. What he read is not what I said. And he has a speech in his hand. So he either saw it wrong or he made a mistake. 
I will not me to read because he read what he said is not what is in this speech. Mr. Speaker, I apologize. I was reading from the wrong speech. That was his last year's speech that he wrote. So let me, let me, let me, let me read, let me, let me read, let me read, let me read, let me read, let me read this year's speech. In the projected outturn this year of 2020, the CIP contribution to revenue. Member, of, member from Microsoft, just hold on. Members, when a member is making his presentation, the loud outburst affects the recording, and therefore the Parliament staff's ability. To transcribe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the project outturn of this year, 23-24, the CIP contributed to a revenue of 45 million, as compared to the approved estimates of 90. So it underachieved. Okay, Mr. Speaker, the reason for the difference between the estimates and the projected outturn is due to an increase in demand for the real estate option, rather than donations that go directly. So let me explain that, Mr. Speaker. We have two programs. We have a real estate program where the money does not come to the government of St. Lucia. It goes to the real estate development. We only have one real estate development in this country. The donation, Mr. Speaker, comes directly to CIP and goes into the economic fund. So what the Prime Minister is saying is that the real estate program is cannibalizing, is eroding the value of our donation program. Now, how can that be when the Real estate is supposed to be $200,000. And our donation is 100000 <coughs> Why? And I'm going to say to the Prime Minister that I am very concerned that with this new infrastructural program you all want to put out at a price of $100,000, which explains, Mr. Speaker, why St. Lucia has not signed on to the new agreement with the OECS. Because the OECS group have now agreed that they're going, the minimum price is going to be 200,000. So all of a sudden now, Mr. Speaker, and that there is evidence in the marketplace, Mr. Speaker, that the $100,000 is being spent, is being sold for 80,000. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, 64.1 million was received by the Ec National Economic Fund from the amount of 45 million was transferred directly to, into revenue. The balance is available for the use of the record. So it means, Mr. Speaker, the intention of the economic fund, Mr. Speaker, was to be a sink fund, was to be um, a sovereign fund, that they've taken the vast majority of the money and put it into what, Mr. Speaker? The recurrent expenditure. So there's two things, Mr. Speaker, that between the CIP revenues and keeping the price of fuel at 1650, Mr. Speaker, that is what caused the surplus in our revenue. And in the case of the fuel, it has come at the expense of the people of this country, Mr. Speaker. Don't go and brag about your surplus. The surplus has come from the backs of the people of this country that are in a position of despair. They are suffering. And don't fool yourself in this house to believe that they're not and think that everything is okay. There are people on the ground who are suffering. And this government's policies have not supported them. When you allow the price of fuel, the price of cooking gas, the price of bread, the price of, um, of, of bus fares. But more importantly, when the good member, the blue whale, Mr. Speaker, would want to come on TV and to try to justify increasing the price of water and to want to use bear as a comparison, that, that people would substitute bear for water, Mr. Speaker, that's what they want to do at this point? That's what they're going to do, Mr. Speaker? That's what they're going to do, Mr. Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, in addition, 39 million was received from bonds. So half of the bonds that the government received this year, Mr. Speaker, were from CIP, not from the regional bond market. Not from the regional bond market, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to just leave my last minute, Mr. Speaker, to speak specifically about my constituency. I want to thank my constituents for their continued support, Mr. Speaker, for what they have done for me. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Prime Minister for the CDP project and also to thank the Taiwanese um, for their continued generosity to the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that in the projects that we did, Last year, we did a road and a, a sporting facility, plus we used some of the money as recommended by the Prime Minister for social support. This year, this year, Mr. Speaker, we're doing the T. Roche River Road, which has already been completed, Mr. Speaker. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, but we were trying to do the Duga Community Center. And in a large part, because it's also a, um, a hurricane shelter, Mr. Speaker. So it serves two purposes. And if you know a lot of the houses there, it's important for us to have a proper hurricane shelter. But sadly, Mr. Speaker, um, the council did not approve it. And caught up in that project was also monies for the Lacoville changing facilities for the youth. I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that two things will happen. That each minister, each MP, is entitled by law, Mr. Speaker, to nominate somebody on, the cast, on, the, on their council. That's not happening. The member, the member that I have nominated up to today has not been put on the council. But I have met with the council. I'm hoping that we can have a better collaboration. Member, you have a minute to wrap up? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Okay, collaboration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping that the appropriations bill will come down. I'm hoping the appropriations bill will provide some direction to where we're going. Because certainly what the numbers say, Mr. Speaker, there's not a lot for people to hold on to. In the critical agencies, there have been cuts. There's a, some politics being played in the government where the Minister of Infrastructure, his budget has been cut by $50 million. And the monies were transferred to the, the Prime Minister. I want to know what's going on. Maybe he's now figured out what we all knew. But Mr. Speaker, this budget is a state of hopelessness in that it does not provide any direction, any substance, any change. In fact, what I'm seeing, Mr. Speaker, is a continuation in some ways, in some ways, of what we're doing, but sadly, in not and enough ways. And we have ways. 10 seconds left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 